By the way, this theme actually only has um, one column for the blocks on the right-hand side. So those, those are actually blocks up here. There's people block, course completion, self-completion. I'll talk about those as we get there. And it docks the blocks on the left-hand side. So if you dock them, they appear on this side. Otherwise, they're over there. Uh, all right, let me talk about the editor. Uh, so for those who have been using Moodle, you know Moodle had an ed a WYSIWYG editor in there. So when you want to write some text, you can highlight it and bold it and, and so on. Uh, there was a problem. It, it's a, it, it's, it was based on an old WYSIWYG editor called an HTML area. And honestly, it was, it's past its use-by date. Um, it didn't work that well with some old versions of Internet Explorer basically just didn't work with um, Chrome or Safari had problems with it as well if you're a Mac user. Uh, so, and there was a lot of hacks around um, to fix those things. So they just decided to scrap it. <laughs> and they've gone with an editor which you would have seen on the web anyway. It's called TinyMCE. Uh, so let me turn the editing on. Here's this thing. And so that's the new editor. I mean, I'm not going to go through all the features in it. Uh, basically does everything the old editor did, plus a few more icons in there to make life easier for you. Um, but it just works really well, and it works with pretty much any um, browser. They, test, they actually do test now Safari, Chrome, make sure it works with those as well. Um, so it's much nicer. The other nice thing about it is um, it's actually scalable on the fly as well. Um, so. In Moodle 2, they've completely rewritten how files are handled. So again, in the, in the current version of Moodle, what would happen is uh, you'd hop into a course as a teacher or facilitator, you'd upload some files, and you could use them in that course. You could link to them, so it might be a PDF, you upload it. And, and it was in a course files area, and for that course you could link to the files and so on. Um, that's okay, but it had some big problems up behind the scenes on how you deal with backups and restores and where files are linked to and so on, and trying to maintain links. And so what they've done is they've completely rewritten the file handling underneath. So this is nothing that's really visible, but important to know. Um, what happens now, when you upload a file, it's actually associated with the activity or whatever it is, the resource that you're linking it to. Which is nice, because now if you move, a, uh, say, an assignment that has an image built into maybe the introduction or something, and you move it to another course, that file is attached to that assignment. It belongs to the assignment and it goes with it. Uh, now, the downside to that is there's no actual course files area anymore. And uh, if you've been following this on middle.org, there's a big discussion about that because from a teacher's point of view, you actually do want course files sometimes. There's, there's that concept of course files. Um, from a Moodle's programming point of view, it doesn't make sense. So somewhere in between, they need to meet and you know, work things out. Uh, so that's, a, that's actually one of those ongoing discussions. I don't know if it will be resolved before Moodle 2 is released as a stable release. Um, I suspect Moodle 2.1 is when they'll fix that part of it up. Um, now with the file handling as well, under, behind the scenes, um, there's, there's also a problem of if I use this PDF in course A, and I use the same PDF in course B, there's two copies of the PDF in Moodle. Um, and then if I duplicate the course, there'll be another copy of it, and Moodle just and start using up all this disk space, which is pointless because it's the same PDF or document that I'm using. The, the, the new file management system actually recognises if you upload the same file. Um, for those who are programming people, it actually hashes the contents and on the file system itself it stores it by the hash. And so Moodle will actually hash the contents of any file you upload and it will recognise if you've already uploaded that same file and it will only store one copy of it. So it doesn't matter how many times you've used it within your site and how many courses, it's only got one copy and it just links to that same copy and has database tables to maintain those links and so on. Uh, so suddenly for those who have been running really large sites, and we have organisations that we help maintain these sites like 90,000 users, and you can imagine we're talking a lot of data they have in there for users. Um, that's, that's a huge saving, um, because some of them are running thousands of courses as well, and usually they just duplicate them off for every term or semester or something. They're copying the same course, but they're duplicating their resources. So it is a pointless exercise. Uh, right. Now... How this applies to someone like a teacher who's um, setting up a course, so the good part of this, is now Moodle deals with things called repositories. Um, so if you wanted to, let's say, insert an image, um, so blah, 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 and uh, image, 
Oh, and by the way, the interface for attaching linking to files is consistent everywhere now as well. Uh, so again, for those who have been using Moodle, you would have known there's a couple of different interfaces. Sometimes you have to click on choose to use the file, sometimes you click on the file itself. and yeah, Now it's just consistent everywhere. So, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, so let me find or upload an image. So the idea here is that um, these are different repository areas, and it's kind of the idea of how most operating systems work. You know, when you go and find a file in Windows, you come up with, like, my computer and network places and so on. Same deal. Except these are things that make sense from a Moodle point of view as a web application. Uh, so what we've got here, server files, so it looks on the server itself, um, sees what files have been uploaded and what I'm access to. Uh, recent files, so it tracks what I've recently uploaded. So while I've been logged in, what have I uploaded? Um, and I... So as a teacher, I might be doing all sorts of courses and editing all on one hit. Uh, so I'll just keep track of that. I can upload a file on the fly now if I wanted to. You can have your own personal files area. So each user um, can actually have their own files area. It's kind of handy from a student's point of view as well, because they have their own files. They can maybe do some assignments, dump them in there, and you know, they might upload all their files at once and then use them in different courses and so on. Um, which never existed before in Moodle. Uh, I will demonstrate that, but it's actually broken at the moment. <laughs> so, uh, now, I've got one here called test files as well. Uh, one of the other downsides to the new file system is there's actually not, I don't know if anyone's ever gone in behind the scenes, and I'm sure some of you probably have, uh, into the Moodle data directory. You, you would have known it's all sorted by course ID. Uh, it's Moodle data directory that has course ID numbers, and all the files are sitting there for each course. That doesn't exist anymore because um, the files are stored by hash, so you will never know what the actual real file name is and so on. Um, and so people have been asking, how do I upload files? Because sometimes you want to FTP or you want to upload them some way. You might use a Windows Share or something like that and connect it to Moodle. Uh, Moodle has this concept of you can actually create repository system, repositories on the file system itself. So I actually link this to a directory on my Mac and uh, if I Oh, it's actually selected that one already, and there's some folders I'd already done, so some uh, different uh, resources in them. Uh, so that's one way to get around that. And you can create, as an administrator, you can create as many of those as you want to share out with um, people if you wanted to. So this is a public one on this site. So anyone who's a teacher, they could actually access um, that test files one and use the files that are in there. <laughs> now, just to extend that, so why this is really exciting is this. Moodle's take on what a repository is, is just anywhere that stores content where I can go and grab it. So it's not just talking about the local file system or uploading files. It's talking about dedicated repository systems. Um, so things like Alfresco or Hive or um, it could be something like Google Docs, Flickr, YouTube, anything that stores content on the web that I can go and pull it out. And Actually, all those I just mentioned, the API is written. Um, the administrator just needs to tick the boxes and say, yeah, use them. And if I had on the site, and as I said, it's pointless because I'm not connected to the web, um, you'd actually see them there. Because um, I'm trying to get an image, it probably would, would come up with a Flickr button there. Um, and if you use the Flickr one, it would actually go there and say, what license? Do you want to reuse this to display it? It knows about licenses as well. Uh, so is it under Creative Commons? Do, is it restricted use and so on? Um, so you can do search by keywords and so on. So each repository is a plugin into Moodle, and you could write your own. So, for instance, at HKU, I don't know um, how you manage documents here, whether you have a central document repository, but there's no reason why you couldn't write a plugin for Moodle to access that directly. And, um, and the repository itself can restrict the access, depending on who you are. It can know about who you are, and do single sign-ons and all that as well. Uh, so it's an extremely powerful system. And it's a good example of one of those areas where Martin just said, look, Moodle's not meant to be a document repository system. It's not what it's about. It's about learning management. Um, however, we'll just plug into all those other systems out there, and they can manage new restricting users' access or whatever they need to do, and Moodle will just grab copies of files as it needs it. So, for example, I did have Flickr set up. I'd click on Flickr, maybe do a keyword search. Uh, what it does up in this panel comes up with all, these, all the um, results. You actually see icons coming up, all the images, and you click on one. And Moodle just goes and grabs a copy of it, stores that, and uses it. So very, very easy to go and grab files off the web now. Um, before it was a bit of a pain, because you have to go to Flickr, save it on your local computer, upload it again, and so on. Um, 
but now it just works. And it's also smart enough to know about different types of content as well. So if I was inserting a video, it would actually come with YouTube. YouTube wouldn't appear for an image, but would for a video. And um, then just for YouTube, it actually just grabs the link, and refers to the YouTube site. So even if I do grab an image, I can say on this site, there's all the different licenses I can use. Uh, they come standard with Moodle 2 now. So I can say this image is uh, public domain. Uh, so this file, there you go. <laughs> There we go. So it changes. So as I said, if I used it anywhere else in Moodle, they only stole the one copy of it, just knows I've used it before. So. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Because as teachers, we might teach a few courses, as you said, yeah. but they've all bundled in one repository. So as we try to identify which file, if not which articles to pick for what a course A, not course B, does it mean that we have to go through the long list and then identify which one before we say this is the file for course A and that file is for course B? Is that how it might work for teachers? Um, it's actually meant to make it easier for teachers. Um, I guess what happens now is you'll have to be looking for those documents anyway. Like you, when you go and upload it, you're going to have to go find it and say, is this the file for course A or course B and so on. The idea of the repository system is that um, it will do two things. One, it will let the repository system do a lot of that organisation for you. Now, that's outside of Moodle, so it depends on the repository system. Um, but the second thing is this. If you're a teacher, as I said, you can have your own files area. So you could upload it to your own files area first, and that can just follow you around. So it's not like you have to find the same file over and over. You've actually already uploaded it once, and Moodle will know about that as well. So um, Potentially, no, it might... It won't be any worse than what it is now, and potentially it won't be any better either, but the potential is there to be better. That's, that's the, I guess, the answer. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. An attachment to a forum post. There's some recent files I've uploaded to that, but I love it. Um, I'll use the same one again. Uh, what will happen is... Um, now the portfolio system, just to explain what that is, uh, Moodle's take on portfolios, everyone has, it's one of those buzzwords on the internet nowadays, portfolios, uh, Moodle's take on it is it's anywhere you can store content. So repository is anywhere you can grab content and portfolio is anywhere you can push the content out. Uh, which opens it up to all sorts of possibilities. And almost anything that's a repository could also be a portfolio system. Usually you can push, push information back out to those same systems. Um, there's dedicated ones out there, uh, so Mahara is one we deal with quite a lot, um, which is very powerful from a user's point of view. Um, but again, you might um, want to send it to your Flickr account. So imagine as a student, I've done a Word document and uh, I've uploaded it to Moodle to give it to my teacher, but I also want to have it somewhere else for me to manage personally. So anywhere that as a user actually attaches a document, uploads it into Moodle, will appear these buttons. Now there's only one portfolio because I'm not connected to the web right now. But if it was Mahara, you'd see Mahara button there, or there'd be Flickr account, so I add it to my Flickr account if it was an image, um, and so on. So on the fly, every user can actually go, send it to Moodle and send it to my repository. Uh, which is extremely powerful. 